Welcome to uh, this Compute 413 video lecture. This is going to be uh, this uh, lecture that introduces the concept of edit distance. Uh, so I've marked it as ED1 and it will be followed by various other shorter um, videos ED2, 3 and 4. So this um, slides are about the concept of minimum cost edit distance. And the problem we want to solve here is to take a source string and edit it into a target string. Each edit uh, comes with a cost and our task is to find the minimum cost edit. So this will become clear with an example. Let's take a input string crest here and um, we want to convert this uh, source string into the target string actress. Um, and you can think of many different ways of doing that. And here's um, one way. You can take an A and insert it at the beginning, and you get A, C, R, E, S, T. You insert a T between the C and the R, you get actress. You delete. Uh, the final T, you get actress with one S, you insert an S, you get actress, which is the word that we wanted. So you can see that there are four edits that take you from crest to actress, uh, framed in terms of insertions and deletions. And so our goal is to find an algorithm that will, for any source string, target string, give us this minimum uh, cost edit. Okay, so if you look at this, um, it's kind of tedious to write down a sequence of changes like this, so instead we're going to represent it using this notation here. Um, the underscore uh, represents an uh, alignment to something that doesn't exist in the other string. So, for example, in this case, we have an A aligned to an underscore, um, and we always have the target string on top and the source string at the bottom. So what this is saying is that A is being inserted into the target string because there isn't any equivalent character in the source and it only exists in the target. So this is an example of an alignment um, which is an insertion. And you can see that C gets aligned to C. So they match. It's called equality. Uh, again, T gets inserted. Uh, in this case, it's marked like that. And um, finally, there's a bunch of equalities. So R, E, S are the same. And there is a deletion. So you can see that T occurs in the source, but doesn't occur in the target. So what we're doing is removing the T and gets, uh, we show that visually as being aligned to this underscore in the target. So this minimum cost edit distance can be accomplished in multiple ways. So this sequence of edits is not unique. Um, there can be many other edits that can take crest and convert it into actress, as you can imagine. So here's, um, uh, another one and you can see it's almost the same as the uh, alignment we saw before except you can see the differences in this part here um, and these two uh, the order of the deletion of T insertion of S is reversed so instead of deleting the T and inserting the S like we do here um, we insert an S and delete a T, as we do here. So it's just the order uh, change, but that matters. Um, it's, it's a different sequence of edits. Although it, the number of edits is the same, it's still four. Here's another alignment um, where you can see that because there are two S's in actress, uh, one could align the S in crest 
to either one of the S's in actress, and that's just why you get this other alignment. Also, exactly four edits. And finally, this one um, is a alignment which seems to have three edits, but that's because what we've shown here is that S can be mapped to a T, and um, if this uh, change is given a cost of two, then you still have one insertion here, one insertion here, and this having a cost of two means the cost is still four. And it turns out there are only four ways to edit uh, this particular source string to this particular target string. Um, in other cases, there might be many more or less, but in this case, there's uh, four different uh, ways to edit that have the same minimum cost, which is four edits. So this notion of edit distance is uh, often referred to as Levenstein distance. Um, and Levenstein distance uh, refers to a certain setting for uh, computing edit distance where the cost is fixed across the characters. At least that's the convention nowadays. So um, the insertion cost is assumed to be one, the deletion cost is one. So inserting a character, you pay a penalty of one, deletion, deleting a character, you pay a penalty of one. And there could be two different costs for substitution. Uh, substitution cost of one implies a transformation and is um, sort of cheaper than deleting and inserting. But more um, commonly, the substitution cost is taken to be two, uh, which is the same as one deletion, one insertion. And that's the setting we're going to use for the rest of these slides uh, and the remaining modules. So this gentleman here is Vladimir Levenstein, after whom Levenstein distance is named. And if you have uh, time to spare, you can try and compute the edit distance between his Russian Cyrillic uh, and the uh, English Roman script version of his name. Um, edit distance is useful in many, many different uh, settings in natural language processing. Um, and often edit distance is generalized uh, to not just uh, extending from one character to multiple characters. For example, you could delete two characters for one cost in which case um, the things become a bit more complex, but uh, the same basic idea holds. Uh, so instead of editing one character time, you can maybe ed edit multiple characters. And here's an um, uh, example. Uh, let's say that you wanted to compare two different system outputs. Um, the two different uh, vendors selling you capitalization software. So if you want to take all of your lowercase uh, output and convert it into true case, which is the, the correct mixture of upper and lowercase, um, and you want to decide between two vendors, uh, you want to actually give them a number, a score, you can use edit distance. So if the input is lowercase IBM, and one system produces all uppercase versus a different system produces only the first letter uppercase, like as if it's uh, a proper name of a person, then you could say one of them has a smaller edit distance score to the truth, um, which we uh, can then use to evaluate these two systems. It can also be used for various kinds of error correction, for example, spelling correction, and we'll look at that in more detail later. And you don't have to actually compute edit distance over characters. You can also compute edit distance over word edits. So for example, if you're doing machine translation uh, evaluation and you want to know how good is somebody's machine translation system, well, maybe you can compare the output of a translation system with some pre-existing human translation. So there's an expert translator produce some translation for some Chinese sentence. Your system produces uh, this input here, and we want to comp compare it with this human uh, translation uh, at the bottom. 
And you can see we can frame this evaluation as a edit distance problem. It's a sequence. You can think of uh, how many edits does it take to take a system output and convert it to a human output. And it's an estimate of the cost of making the translation you know, acceptable. And uh, this is commonly used to evaluate uh, machine translation systems. Here's a, a nice example of a use of uh, edit distance. Actually, this one just uses plain Levenstein distance, but based on pronunciations, not the spellings. Uh, this is a map of the Netherlands. It's uh, from Heringer's PhD thesis from 2004. And he mapped uh, how different are the pronunciations of the same set of words in Dutch across the country. And the colors there uh, represent similarity. Uh, so the same color means that uh, the population had the same pronunciation. And then if they have very different pronunciation, the colors look very different. And you can see, interestingly, uh, various dialectal regions of the Netherlands kind of show up uh, nicely in this map. 